So I just put the journal together and of course from what was in my heart, what the Lord asked me to minister and I knew that it wasn't going to be just another book. I knew it was going to be um, a, a, a means of um, witnessing, being a witness for the Lord. So, and that is exactly how I handled the book. I didn't um, publish it for, for profit. I just published it as the witness unto the Lord. And that's just what I testify is about. Tell us what a typical sickle cell crisis experience is like. Sickle cell disease is, um, is, a, is a horrible disease because first and foremost, it's a very painful disease. When, you, when one talks about the sickle cell crisis, that means that um, not that you haven't been living with pain, you've been living with bearable pain. But by the time you have a sickle cell crisis, that is when the pain gets um, out of proportion that you can't um, bear the pain anymore. That is what is called the sickle cell crisis. And it's a conglomeration of so many things that happen. First of all, sickle cell di um, um, disease is um, living a life of anemia, mm -hmm. not having enough blood or uh, enough blood to do what blood is supposed to do in the body or uh, efficient enough blood to do its work efficiently. And um, sickle cell disease is um, when your red blood cell that's supposed to carry oxygen around the body does not carry the oxygen efficiently because it's the shape of the blood is of spherical. It is crescent shaped, sickle shaped. And so it doesn't um, pass through the veins smoothly. It keeps hooking onto different things along the vein. And then when it gets stuck like that, builds up aggregates, forms clots, and your blood cannot flow through again, there's a lot of pain, a lot of backup and a lot of pain. So you're not getting enough oxygen. Um, you can faint from not get enough oxygen to your brain, for example. You can have a, faint, a fainting spell. You have a lot of um, pain in your bone marrows because uh, uh, blood is not getting through there efficiently. So you have a lot of bone marrow pain in your joints, in your long bones, in your chest, because obviously your heart is working, your, your lungs looking for oxygen and can't get it. So there's a lot of pain in your chest, in your joints, in everywhere. So it's um, anemia, basically, but anemia with a lot of pain. Mm -hmm. So that's what the sickle cell um, crisis is all about. And um, usually people don't live, people with um, sickle cell disease, at least in Nigeria, don't normally live to a ripe old age. Um, when they're young, they can't manage the crisis um, efficiently. So they usually die um, because um, many times you need a blood transfusion. Somebody will donate blood, somebody with good blood that doesn't have the sickle cell traits mm -hmm. will donate that blood and they'll transfuse that blood into, uh, into you. So that at least there'll be some good blood that can carry oxygen about the body. And not many people have access to blood transfusions. Sure. So uh, many people die. And um, usually by the age of uh, puberty for women, where they start having their monthly menstruation, losing blood again on top of all the problems. Uh -huh. mm. So, um, and then another period that, that um, they don't usually last is uh, when women get pregnant, mm -hmm. you know that the baby usually takes a lot of uh, nutrients from the mother. So that is usually also another challenge for sicklers. And um, sicklers are usually advised where, where, where in Nigeria not to um, have children because it's a difficult period. Many people just do not survive. You were four months pregnant with your daughter when you experienced the crisis that actually almost took your life. But God spared your life and your baby was born. Tell me a little bit about that. It was a, a really great miracle. And um, to keep reminding myself, my husband and I, we named our daughter Datoyo 
Utova Basi. That means take this gift and remember the wonderful, miraculous Hallelujah. God. That's her name. <laughs> so, Hallelujah. and each time we look at her, yeah. So what, what happened was that um, people had started talk, uh, talking to my husband that, huh, you went and married a secular for a wife. You're not going to have any children. So he started getting worried. He knew I was a sickler, or, you know, uh, very well. But, you know, because people kept, you know, talking to him, he, he became anxious and uh, um, unknown to me. He now started talking to pastors and saying, oh, my wife is not yet pregnant. What are we going to do? He started, you know, fearing that, you know, perhaps I would never get pregnant because I was a sickler. Mm. But um, by the time one of the pastors together and started uh, asking questions. It just so happened that I had already become pregnant at that time. So that was a big miracle for him. Did you tell but, him? No, no well, we, 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 we had just discovered that day okay. that I was pregnant. And um, it's uh, challenging, like I've said, sickle cell anemia, sickle cell disease is a life of anemia you yourself don't have enough blood mm -hmm. and then now comes the baby that's always uh, also demanding for a lot of blood and um, one of the challenges that we have in Nigeria is um, a high rate of maternal uh, mort mortality because of um, malaria that is endemic in nature malaria is one of the number one um, killers of mothers at um, during pregnancy and at childbirth wow. yes because malaria is a disease that also um, brings anemia the parasite lives in the red blood cells when it grows up in the red blood cells mm -hmm. it lyses it it um, bursts the, those red blood cells and then infests you know more of the red blood cells so you're living a life of anemia your blood is literally challenged so when I was four months pregnant, I had malaria. I got malaria. So I had a, a, a three-way challenge mm. and um, I had to be taken to the hospital. And the doctor said I was to be on total bed rest. Total bed rest to the extent that I wasn't even allowed to stand up from the bed and do my toileting. I had to do my toileting in, in bed with a bedpan. So, and um, the malarial drugs are really very harsh. Um, pregnant mothers usually are not given malarial drugs. Mm -hmm. So I had to battle with sickle cell anemia, battle with malaria, and battle with the demands of the baby. And um, it, 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 was, it was more or less a foregone conclusion to everyone who came to visit me in the hospital that I wouldn't live. I was as skinny as a scarecrow. I was like, you know, bag of skin and bones. Mm -hmm. And um, I kept having blood transfusions. In fact, I had like about 17 pints of blood. I always had um, some fluid going into me. So it was a really challenging period. And many people, my friends particularly, who would come to pay me a visit, were, you know, shocked to see how poorly I was looking and they would start crying and I would tell them, why are you crying? Because I was very sure <laughs> within me that I wasn't going to die. I was, I was so sure that I wasn't going to die because, I mean, Jesus Christ is my savior. So it didn't even cross my mind at all. But everybody who saw me said, she's certainly going to die and they would cry. And there were lots of prayers going on in all the churches, the fellowships. Mm -hmm. It was amazing how people were praying for me everywhere, not just um, uh, 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 in the town where I was, mm -hmm. but in cities across Nigeria, churches, even abroad, people were praying for me. They set up a, a, um, a prayer chain. Wow. So it was amazing. Mm 